I want to answer a question that I've been getting from some of you folks that are new to options trading. You're new to options trading and you're trying out the wheel strategy. And of course, trying out the wheel strategy, the very first thing you need to do when running the wheel is sell cash secured puts on stocks that you wouldn't mind owning long term if you get assigned shares. And I keep getting this question, well, how do you find these stocks to run the wheel on? You know, what's the criteria? How do I go about finding good companies to run the wheel? Well, the thing is, it's actually not that complicated. I think many people make this seem more complicated than it really is. When it comes to picking good stocks to run the wheel on, of course, we want to choose good companies that if we get assigned shares, we don't mind owning those shares potentially for the long term. So what this means is don't pick garbage companies, pick good companies. Well, if you're new to trading, what is a good company? What is a garbage company? Well, I think the easiest way to think about this as a new trader is pick companies that you actually have heard of, right? That you know the names of, that you have bought their products or used their services. You know, trade what you know, trade the things that you use especially every day. And this is really where a lot of new options traders get into trouble because they trade these ticker symbols that they just heard about today. You know, they, they read about it on some subreddit or through some scammy email that they received, you know, the latest, greatest you know, stock tip that they get in their email. Of course, all that is typically penny stock, pump and dumps. Don't look at any of that stuff. Trade the companies that you actually know are good companies because you interact with them in life. So let's run through an exercise. Think about all of the companies, publicly traded companies that you interacted with just today. I'm going to go ahead and go to my trading platform and I'm just going to run through everything that I did today. So this morning I got up and I wanted to go through a, a drive through and get some breakfast on my way to the office and I stopped at McDonald's. McDonald's is a very large publicly traded company. It's been a public company for decades and it is a profitable company. Uh, ticker symbol MCD. Now I'm not telling you guys to go trade McDonald's or any ticker symbols that you know I pull up today, but you know these are well-known established companies. You know McDonald's is a real company. Would I mind owning shares of McDonald's long term? I, I wouldn't hate it, right? So you know that's just the very first thing I interacted with this morning was. McDonald's. After I got my breakfast, I had to stop at a gas station and I had to fill up my car with gas. I stopped at a Exxon station. Exxon Mobil is XOM, uh, largest oil company you know in the world, or one of the largest ones in the world, right? It's a very profitable company. It's, it's an established company. It's been around forever. Would I mind running the wheel on a stock like Exxon Mobil? I would have no problem doing that. Now let's imagine when I uh, leave the office this afternoon, I have to pick up a few things at a store, maybe uh, some groceries or some retail shopping, whatever it happens to be. I mean, two of the largest retailers here in my city are Walmart. I've got several Walmarts around town, neighborhood Walmarts, as well as a super Walmart. WMT, of course, is the ticker symbol for Walmart. Would I have a problem owning Walmart long term? You know, if I ran the wheel on it? No, I'd have no problem with that. Target is another big retailer here in the area. Target, TGT. Now, again, these are just companies that you know, you know, I'm sitting here at my computer. Obviously, I interact with a lot of Google services on my computer. I'm publishing my videos to YouTube, which is owned by Google. So I'll trade Google. I know Google is a trillion dollar company, a very large company, a very big component to the overall market. And I have no problem running the wheel on a company like Google. And you guys interact with Google every single day, probably if you're watching YouTube, you do your Google searches. I mean, just think about the things you use. I know many of you guys probably don't think about these things, but where do you do your online shopping? I bet you do it on Amazon, right? Or you do it through Walmart, which we already looked at. That's the two biggest, you know, online retailers and you know there's Amazon right now would I mind running the wheel on Amazon no I, I'd have no problem with that you're probably using a, a Windows computer you know most of you guys so how about Microsoft MSFT Microsoft another trillion dollar company if you're not using a Windows computer chances are you're using a Apple computer many of you guys if you're on mobile a lot of you guys have uh, iPhones or other iDevices iPads you know Apple another trillion dollar company 
And I can tell you just me personally, I would have absolutely no problem owning a few shares of Apple for the long term or Microsoft for the long term. You know, any of these trillion dollar companies. When I go home this evening, what am I going to do to relax? I think I'm going to watch some Netflix. That's what I do. That's what a lot of you guys do. Have you ever thought about Netflix that you watch every day? It's a publicly traded company. It's a very large and profitable publicly traded company. So there's Netflix. Uh, many of you guys, uh, your online uh, services, things you order online. How many of you use? DoorDash. And that's just one that comes to mind. Dash is the ticker symbol for DoorDash. I really don't trade DoorDash that much. It's not that uh, liquid of a product, but it does trade a little bit. Uber is one that does trade uh, quite a bit. And I do trade a lot of Uber. Uber, how many of you guys order Uber rides, right? Or, or some of you guys as a side hustle or even working Uber, you know, it's a publicly traded company. Maybe, you know, sometime today, I've got to run to an ATM and get some cash because I'll need cash for something. I'll, I'll run through my bank's ATM. I bank with uh, Chase and Chase banks are part of JP Morgan Chase, which ticker symbol JPM, you know, is uh, the largest bank in the world. Pretty much JPM. Let me make sure I type that right. JP Morgan, very liquid stock. It's a very profitable company. It's a big company that's been around for decades. Would I mind wheeling a stock like JPM? No, I'd have no problem. Maybe Bank with Bank of America, BAC, you know, it's another one that you could use or C for Citigroup. Almost everyone has debit cards and credit cards in their wallet or in their purse. And you probably got a Visa card. So I uh, believe the ticker symbol for Visa is V. Yeah, there is Visa. MasterCard is another one. MasterCard is M-A, the ticker symbol M-A. And, you know, again, these are just products you interact with every day in life. I could sit here and if I think long enough, I could come up with literally dozens of things that I've used today, if not in the last week or so. Uh, dozens of publicly traded companies, well-known, very profitable, long track record of making money companies to run the wheel on. And it's very important that you choose these well-known companies. A well-known company is likely to have a long track record of being profitable. That's why they've been around so long. That's why everybody knows about them. It's because they've been around forever because they make money. So trade the well-known companies, those garbage companies, those lesser known companies. They're typically not the profitable companies. They typically don't trade a lot of shares either. They're typically not liquid products. And these garbage companies are the ones that typically fall hard. They're the ones that drop hard in price, you know, 20, 30, 40% sometimes in a day. And sometimes they fall, you know, they, they lose most of their value rather quickly and then never recover. Garbage companies do that all the time. Well-known companies rarely make such a huge drop. And when they do drop in price, you know, typically it's short lived. They'll eventually recover because again, they've been profitable for many years, if not many decades. So uh, they, they have a much better chance of coming back to you. And that's what you want when you run the wheel. Where I see a lot of traders get in trouble is they try to trade these companies that are not well known. Uh, maybe they naturally found out about this company through their own research. But a lot of times uh, these people, People, these traders I see, they, they get stock tips from people online, you know, such as video influencers on YouTube or TikTok. They'll talk about these really weird companies, these strange ticker symbols that nobody's ever heard of, and they'll really pump it. They'll promote it, and they'll sucker in uh, a lot of especially new traders into also buying into the hype. So you know, don't do all that, right? Trade what you know. Trade the well-known companies, because I can give you many examples of like industries and ticker symbols that I, I've seen a lot of people get trapped in over the years. So let's start with the electric car industry. Obviously, Tesla is king. Tesla is one of the most liquid products to trade. Like if you wanted to trade Tesla, yeah, I'll trade Tesla all day long. And as far as owning shares of Tesla for the long term, would I be okay with that? Sure. Sure. I'd have no problem running the wheel on Tesla, but pretty much every other EV manufacturer on the planet has not been profitable and they have been struggling, but I see so many people that have lost a ton of money on garbage. 
like Rivian, R-I-V-N, right? This company has sunk all the way. Where is it trading now? It's, it's under $10 a share. Well, it's right at $10 a share. But, you know, Rivian used to trade much, much higher. You can see even in the last year, at one point this year, Rivian was trading at $28. And now it's down to $10, right? It's pretty much dropped like 60% of its value just in the last few months. Now, would this be a good candidate for wheeling? No, absolutely not. Pretty much anybody that jumped on the EV uh, bandwagon and got into all of these EV stocks lost their shirt. Nikola, here's one. It is trading for 61 cents. And this thing used to trade, I don't know, for dozens of dollars, if not hundreds of dollars at one point. I'd have to go way back on the chart. I'm not going to do that. A lot of new financial uh, stocks, you know, personal lending, uh, decentralized finance sort of stuff. You know, a lot of these things are also very depressed. I see a lot of people that for whatever reason got trapped into trading SoFi. SoFi is currently, it's, its share price is all the way down at $7. I mean, this thing is a real, just, it's a pig, right? I would never want to be wheeling a stock like SoFi. Like it's, it's a complete garbage company. It's more likely to go bankrupt than to, you know, trade for $20 in the next year, right? It's much more likely to go south than north. Same thing with something like a firm. Where is a firm trading? Actually, a firm's chart doesn't look too bad. It's trading at $36, but this thing used to trade for whoa, almost 200 and that's not even like two years ago. So there's an example too. Remember the uh, cannabis craze when everybody was getting into all the marijuana stocks? Everyone traded Tilray. If you guys were trading, you know, say three, four, five years ago, you guys remember everybody was on the Tilray bandwagon. Where is Tilray trading right now? It is trading at $2.03. And this thing used to trade, uh, you know, like 50 times higher than this, you know, well over $100. Another one that I remember people trading was, uh, was it SNDL? It's another one of these uh, cannabis stocks is trading for about two bucks. And it's another one I believe was trading well over a hundred dollars at one point. And this is a perfect example of bad stocks to run the wheel on. But again, why would you have ever even heard of any of these names? They, I mean, I, I get they're publicly traded companies and it's possible that you would have come by some of these names. Maybe you heard of things like SoFi and Affirm, but most people in life have never heard of those companies even, right? And certainly not some of the weird stuff like Tilray, right? You, you should not be trading this kind of garbage, right? Trade the stuff you know. Trade those really big liquid companies that you see everybody else trading. There's a reason everybody is trading things like Amazon, Microsoft, Google, right? There's a reason you don't hear like the big players. There's a reason Warren Buffett is not stockpiling shares of Tilray right now. Now, one thing I do want to warn you is be careful about picking very well-known companies that are past their prime. For example, you know, the largest companies on, that traded in the stock market 100 years ago were Ford and GM. It was the big auto manufacturers, right? Because cars were a kind of a new technology and all of a sudden everybody had to have a car. So, you know, at one point Ford was the richest company in the world. And we're talking about decades and decades ago. Now Ford is trading for $12 a share, only 18 million shares have traded today. Ford, you know, even though it's a well-known company, I would not necessarily want to be running the wheel on Ford. I would not want to be holding shares of Ford for the long term. Same thing with General Motors. GM was once the richest company in the world. Again, decades passed, but now its stock price, actually it's rebounded quite nicely here in the last year. It was trading all the way down at $26 a share, but now it's come back up to 45. But again, Ford and GM used to trade much, much, much higher than they're trading now. The same is true with things like the uh, phone companies, you know, uh, AT&T, for example, is not something I would want to be holding for the long term. Right now, AT&T is trading for $17 a share, and it's, it was all the way down at around $13 a share not too long ago. And this is not a great looking company as far as holding shares for the long term. VZ is Verizon. Uh, Verizon looks a little better, but again, it's probably not something I would be comfortable. You know, just that industry is not a great industry. Uh, things like Walgreens Boots Alliance, which is their local pharmacies, right? and they have been really struggling for a number of years now. And you can see Walgreens now is trading all the way down at $17, which is 
a long way from where it was trading just a couple of years ago where it was trading in the 50s if i go back further i'm sure it was probably trading much higher even than that so this thing has come way way down you know even though those are well-known companies just because they're well-known companies if it's an industry that you know that is well past its prime right and the, the, those companies you know they were the darlings decades ago but now you know we're on to new technologies you know so now ford and gm they're in the past now tesla for example is the future right evs are the future so just some tips on how to find stocks to run the wheel on right i think you know for most of you guys like 95 percent of the time if you just stick to well-known companies companies that you interact with that you deal with every day those are the the most liquid most well-known companies if you stick with that you'll be all right now having said all of that just because you trade these well-known liquid companies does that mean that you're never going to lose no you might take an occasional loser a matter of fact you will take an occasional loser now is there's something wrong with your trading criteria if you you know pick a company and you lose on a trade no losers do happen but just know if you're trading a lot of well-known companies but you're getting a lot of losers then you might need to re-examine some things because you maybe the criteria that you're using to select your stocks is not quite where it needs to be or maybe just market conditions have changed obviously if the market is in a recession or a lengthy bear market then of course you're going to lose on a lot of your wheel trades because the wheel is a bullish strategy and obviously in a bear market a bullish strategy is not going to do terribly well and always remember the number one rule of trading stay small as long as you stay small you keep your position sizes small that occasional rare loss it won't hurt that much if you guys want to learn more about options trading and specifically about the wheel options strategy check out my book the super wheel options strategy available on amazon you'll find a link in the description below peace guys